Hello. Did you know that in the book of Revelation, we read about a group of tribulation saints? That is, saints of God who, who are alive after the rapture and are living in the final years of the seven-year tribulation period? Who are these tribulation saints and what happens to them? That's what I'm going to talk about in today's message. Hi, I'm Mike Drotus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. So the question that's on my mind today is, who are the tribulation saints and what happens to them? Let's go back to the basics here for a minute. Paul the Apostle wrote about the blessed hope, the rapture of the church. He wrote in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He says this in verse 16, describing the rapture of the church. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Paul's explaining the sequence of the rapture, the soon coming rapture. First, the dead in Christ are risen. They are resurrected out of the graves. Their bodies are here right now. Their spirits are with the Lord. But at the rapture, our dear departed friends and believers who died in Christ come back with the Lord to pick up their resurrected bodies at the rapture. The dead in Christ rise first. Their bodies come out of the graves. They're reconstructed, reformatted at this great rapture event. And their bodies then become a resurrected body, and they are raptured out of here. Then we who remain and alive at the moment of the rapture are changed, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. And this corruptible body puts on incorruption. Verse Now, back to 1 Thessalonians, verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That is what Paul calls the blessed hope or the rapture of the church. It is coming. It is a soon coming event in, in our timeline. The rapture, when Jesus Christ comes back, pulls all the Christians off the face of the earth. It's the great escape before the trumpet judgments and bold judgments of the tribulation period. Jesus used that example in Matthew chapter 24 as well. Look at Matthew 24, verse 36. Jesus used the example of Noah as, as escaping the, the judgment to come upon the earth. In verse 36 of Matthew 24, Jesus says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, only my Father. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is telling them that there is a flood of judgment coming during the seven-year tribulation period where there'll be seven trumpet judgments, seven bold judgments that will be poured out upon this earth poured out upon the Antichrist, the false prophet, those people who accepted the mark of the beast, the demon-possessed, the blasphemer. And yet, even during the time of the Great Tribulation, when there are those who have not accepted the mark of the beast, they will be spared from some of this. Trumpet judgments and bold judgments. Now, what I find interesting in all this is that during the final three and a half years of the tribulation period, there are still going to be believers on the earth. But who are they? And what will happen to them? I mean, after all, the rapture comes before these judgments, before the trumpet judgments, before the bowl judgments, and evacuates the believers. Yet, who are these tribulation saints? I believe they are a group consisting of two subsets of those who miss the rapture. They are like the five foolish virgins. They were not ready. They did not believe. They were not ready for the rapture. They did not believe the rapture. They were mockers. They were scoffers of the rapture. And when the rapture came, they were left behind. 
The tribulation saints is the group of believers who were left behind, either because at the point of the rapture they were not born again, or at the point of the rapture they did not believe. They were scoffers, mockers, deniers. I believe that this group of tribulation saints is a, is, is a, a combined mix, maybe of 75% of mockers and scoffers who missed the rapture like the foolish virgins. They were not ready. They were unprepared. And when the rapture came, they were left. And then the other 25% of these tribulation saints are those who get born again after the rapture. Maybe they were on the fence. Maybe they heard the gospel message, but they never accepted Christ until after the fact they realized that they were wrong and they repented of their sin and they came to Jesus Christ and asked him to be their Lord and Savior. However the mix is, you have a group of believers on the earth during the tribulation period. The bulk of the believers will have been raptured a few years prior to that. But during the last three and a half years in particular, the Bible tells us exactly what's going to happen to these Christians. So let's look at three verses that talk about the tribulation saint and what's going to happen to them while they're here during the final three and a half years of the tribulation period. First verse, Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation chapter 13, we could see in verse 7, the first thing that's going to happen to the tribulation saints is the Antichrist is going to make war against them. He is not going to want any believer, anybody who refuses his mark. He doesn't want anyone who believes in the lordship of Jesus Christ alive on this earth during, during that final three and a half year period. And he is going to make war on those saints. Verse 7 Revelation 13, verse 7, And it was granted to him, talking about the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. During the tribulation period, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you will A, refuse the mark of the beast. Therefore, you cannot buy or sell. You will be an enemy of the state. You will be an enemy of the beast system. And he will hunt down those believers. And make war against them. Number two. If you're a tribulation saint. If you're a saint of God. That's alive during the tribulation period. Because you missed the rapture. Or you weren't ready for the rapture. At that time. The second thing that's going to happen is. You will die. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Here's the patience of saints. Here are those who keep the commandment of God. In the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice. From heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and from their works that follow them. When you're a, a tribulation saint, you, you will die. You will die. The Antichrist will kill you or you will die through collateral damage during the final three and a half years of the tribulation period. And number three, what happens to the tribulation saints? Revelation 14, 12. No, Revelation 20, sorry, Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they sat on the thrones, and judgment was committed unto them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That's a, there's a bad part to this verse and a good part. The bad part is the tribulation saint will be beheaded because he refuses the mark of the beast. He refuses to worship the Antichrist. 
The good news is they will live and reign for a thousand years on this earth during the millennial reign of Christ. They won't miss out on ruling and reigning with Christ during that millennial reign. That's what's going to happen to the tribulation saints. You don't want to go through this time of great tribula tribulation. And you don't have to. The time is short. The rapture is very, very soon. I'm sounding the alarm. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day to A, admit you're a sinner and you need a Savior. B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And C, confess him as your Lord and Savior. There is no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus this. You must be born again. You must be born again in order to be involved in the rapture. The second thing is, if you are a mature Christian who has mocked, who has scoffed, who has uh, laughed about the rapture, who has attacked Christians and, and tried to pull people away who believe in the rapture, you need to repent. You need to repent now. You don't want to be like one of those foolish virgins who weren't ready. I'm imploring you. Get ready. The rapture is real. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't mock. Don't scoff. Don't, don't attack people who believe in the rapture. Repent. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Hey, thanks for watching these videos. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. Every week I do one or two videos on the rapture or on end times Bible prophecy or sometimes on dreams and visions. If you, need a, if you have a prayer request, please leave that in the comments below. I will pray with you and for you. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming very soon. God bless you.